just watched uh, Trisha's uh, Faint Signals from Vega video on Yemen and wanted to make my own comments about that because several things were very apparent to me. One is that, that and, and these are things that are often not said, one is that the Houthi are a political party or political group who are fighting a guerrilla war, a revolutionary guerrilla war, uh, against a government. It's a government that's been propped up by Saudi Arabia. And um, the one thing that we know from guerrilla warfare by Che Guevara, uh, the famous book, is that guerrilla wars never work unless you have support of the people. Okay, we have a situation where there is uh, the people and uh, a guerrilla band fighting for many, many years against a government that has been imposed by externally by Saudi Arabia and you know, is obviously something that the people don't like. If the people liked it, no guerrilla warfare war could possibly succeed. The second thing is that the Saudi government is fully backed by the United States. And here, let's just go back into a little bit of history. The United States loves supporting dictatorships in spite of any narrative they have about democracy. They love supporting a dictator or a strong man because when you do so, you only have to deal with one person who can do whatever they like and will be there for years, decades. And so they love the General Samosas, General Marcos, uh, they love the Sihanouks, they love the um, General Pinochets, they, they love all these often generals, political strongmen. They supported Saddam Hussein because he was yet another of those um, type of people who they could then use to attack Iran, which has been on their agenda ever since the revolution, and the Iranian people got rid of another U.S. strongman, the Shah of Iran. The U.S. loves these strongmen. Uh, quite often they're military dictators um, or monarchs, like you have in Saudi Arabia or with the Shah of Iran or whatever. And the people generally don't like them but the people don't matter because you've got somebody who's essentially a dictator. And the U.S. loves that because they no longer have to consider democracy or the people or the fact that the U.S. agenda might not align with the interests of the people. In fact, it almost never does, which is why the U.S. loves these dictators. They can talk to these dictators, they can make a deal, they can offer to support them with arms and money, uh, often as loans, which then creates uh, a situation of an indebtedness for those nations that will carry on for decades um, and will force them uh, into submission because they can do all kinds of economic gameplay uh, if those countries are seen as debtor nations. Okay, so they support people, uh, I'll use General Samosa as an example, where you have the Sandinistas trying to rise up and, and create some sort of democratic framework within the country. The U.S. hates it. The U.S. not only tries to feed Samosa, but when so Samosa is actually overthrown, they bring in their Contras to try and destroy the Sandinista regime. And uh, the Sandinistas, interestingly, while the Sandinista sort of movement was fundamentally socialist, the Sandinista revolution was also petty bourgeois. It was uh, the bourgeoisie also didn't like um, General Samosa, and it was a very broad revolution. And they would have been very happy to have dealt with the U.S. economically, to engage in, once they had their country in their own control, they would have been happy to trade with the U.S. 
Uh, they made overtures, the U.S. refused, and so they went to the USSR, who was the only other major player economically in the game. And then, of course, the U.S. branded them communists, and you know, they could then justify whatever the hell they wanted to do. Similar things happen with the Houthi. The Houthi uh, are a rebellion. They are not a rebellion of Shia Muslims. They are not uh, you know, a Iran-backed revolution. They are a revolution, sure enough, a people's revolution. And the thing with a revolution uh, or a, a, a revolutionary army, a guerrilla army, is they have to get their weapons and so on from somewhere. And uh, while it's wonderful if you can capture the opponent's weaponry, um, quite often it means turning to someone other than the nation, the nations that are backing your opponent, particularly when your opponent... I mean, the situation in Yemen is that the opponent isn't their government, their puppet government. The opponent is Saudi Arabia and, by extension, the United States, because the United States is right there backing Saudi Arabia, one of the bloodiest, least humane, most in violation of human rights, uh, head-chopping monarchies um, in the world. But the U.S. loves them. They have lots of oil. They can make deals with the Saudi princes. So, you have a situation where Mohammed bin Salman, uh, apparently, made the decision in 2015 to attack Yemen. And uh, I think his own generals, according to the book Blood and Oil, which documents a lot of the, the, the interplay and politics among the princes of Saudi Arabia, this particular privileged group of, of immensely wealth, wealthy people, um, all as a result of the fact that these princes and monarchs, kings, end up having, you know, dozens and dozens of children with their numerous wives and concubines. And so there are hundreds of Saudi princes now who all belong to the royal family to some degree or another. And uh, so Mohammed bin Salman apparently went to, he, he had just installed himself as the head of the Defense Department and came in and said, I want to go to war with Yemen. And his own advisors said, oh, look, I don't think this is a good idea. It's a quagmire. It'll turn into a quagmire. Uh, the U.S. apparently also said, not such a great idea, but he said, no, nah, I want to do it. He was the son of the king, so he was able to do whatever the hell he wanted. Um, and so he went to war, and his generals backed him, and the U.S. backed him, and they've been in there backing him ever since. So you've got Saudi Arabia going to war with uh, what should be an affair within a nation, You've got a revolutionary group fighting against a dictatorial regime, and that should be enough. The people should be able to have a revolution within their own country, without the interference of other countries. But the government they were fighting against was a puppet government um, of Saudi Arabia, and uh, by extension, the U.S., and so they found themselves fighting not only the puppet government, but Saudi Arabia and the U.S. Is it any wonder that people talk about death to the U.S., just like uh, Yankee go home in, in Latin America, you know, or America is the great Satan in Iran, when America keeps meddling and trying to destroy your country? Yeah you tend not to like them very much. Anyway, uh, they talk about the Houthi, you know, escalations, that they're attacking Saudi Arabia. Well, yeah, why should they have to fight 
their war against effectively Saudi Arabia and the US on Yemeni territory. This notion that these people can run their puppet governments and have zero consequences in their own nation, just because the United States has been able to do that. It's fought in numerous wars and none of them have touched their home ground. And so, you know, the United States can get away with it if it obliterates, you know, uh, a big part of Vietnam or Syria and nothing ever happens to the territory of the United States. Well, hey, you know, uh, that's great. You can fight all kinds of wars. And if, you know, like in Vietnam, you lose or in Afghanistan, you're losing it doesn't matter, and it doesn't matter if you're destroying the nation. You can have presidents talk about you know, bombing them back to the Stone Age. It doesn't matter because nothing ever comes home to your own territory. Well, when Saudi Arabia tries this on with Yemen, Yemen is next door. So the idea that nothing should happen in their territory, well, you know, why? the Yemeni realize that their enemy is not the puppet government, but is Saudi Arabia. And so, yes, they're attacking Saudi targets because the Saudi targets are there and they're vulnerable. And so, yeah, they attack Saudi Arabia. And so they should. Saudi Arabia is the enemy. And if they are getting weaponry from Iran, well, where else are they going to get weaponry from? The U.S. isn't going to sell them weapons. They're selling them to Saudi Arabia and fighting with the Saudis. They're not going to, you know, they've got a blockade to try and prevent anything, including food, you know, and, and, and petroleum and so on, from getting in. Yeah, and they've been doing this for years and years now. Yeah, um, and this is disgraceful. If somebody wants to fight these great powers, you know, backed by the U.S. And where are they going to get any kind of arms? The only place they're going to get some arms is somebody outside the sphere of the U.S. And the U.S. counts everybody outside of their sphere as an enemy. And so, yeah, yeah, Iran backed. No, no, they just buy weapons from Iran because Iran will sell them weapons and almost no one else will. And, you know, you can fight a, a, a revolution, but if you don't have any kind of weapons, you're kind of stuffed. And whenever I hear them talk about peace negotiations, well, how are they going to have peace negotiations? There's nothing to negotiate. I mean, are they going to negotiate with Saudi Arabia? For what? You know, Saudi Arabia very clearly doesn't want there to be a democracy in Yemen. They do not want the people to have any kind of control. The U.S. does not want the people to have any kind of control. And so, you know, what kind of peace negotiation can there be? Yeah, you, know, um, you put up this puppet government and we'll stop bombing the fuck out of you? Yeah, you know, that's not a peace negotiation, that's surrender. Okay, I just wanted to say that, you know, I think the Houthi are a revolutionary group. I think they're trying to win back control of their country uh, in the face of um, massive pressure from these international players. And that's all there is to it. And I think if you support democracy at all, if you support the people at all, yeah, it's imperative that people support the Houthi in Yemen and an end to this disgusting war.